So, as some of you may remember, I had a dog with this name in Albania, so it was four years ago, and I, when I was submitting talk proposals for this conference, I was thinking like, hmm, yeah, it's been four years, some, some changes have, uh, some things have changed, so maybe I could update the talk, that's why it has the year in the name, and then I decided, um, I will be repeating a lot of the stuff, so I'm not going to repeat the stuff, I will just add, update the wiki, whatever, and I will just do a lightning talk. Um, uh, you are correctly here for a full talk. That's what happened, and I found out only when I got here to Milan. In the end, I decided I will use the slot when it has been already assigned. So I have extended some of the stuff. I'm not quite sure how much time I will actually need, so uh, let's just see how this will go. I will. Some of us uh, were not have not seen your talk four years ago, so if you want to like, weigh your time, you can focus a little more maybe on the on the reminder part. Yes, I, I can also I can also talk to people who weren't there. Still, like th this is technical stuff. There will be some commands. Still, your the idea is more that I will talk about the stuff. But if you are actually going to use it, you, you will still actually need to look it up. So it doesn't really make much sense to talk about the exact specifics. I meant this more like an overview. But um, kind of the point is, I mean. I think there is nobody here who, who, who will say, yeah, LibreOffice is so quick to build. I think, I think all, of us, all of us, or I, think, I hope all of us have at least some tricks. So if you have some comments during any of the topics, or if there will be some things you would like to share, or if you, if you have some like, specific problems, if there will be time, we can have a look at it. This is just some of the stuff I have collected, I have found. Uh, some of the stuff I have blocked about, so in case you have noticed that you probably know this stuff, but let's just get, go over it and see how it goes. So, um, I still remember times when it was like several hours to rebuild all of LibreOffice. I, I, think, I think the wiki still somewhere says that the build time is something like Eight divided by the number of CPU cores, or something like that. So, right now, for me, I have eight cores, so the normal build time is one hour, which is acceptable, but it used to be worse. So, one of the things that we don't quite like to hear, but if you want things to be fast, it helps to have fast hardware, which is not always the option, but it's, it's in a way the simplest one. And then, it generally, helps to get good tools. Surprisingly, getting a newer compiler actually generally tends to be faster. Uh, on Linux or general Linux platforms, Clang, at least for debug builds, seems to be the better option uh, as, as far as build time goes. And even that improves, like, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, when I update it to Clang 4, uh, my build time for the uh, library SC for the calc library went from more than four minutes to less than three minutes. I have no idea what changed, but suddenly more, more than so there was something like thirty percent of the build time just disappeared. I have no idea why. It just it just got better. So if you don't, I suggest yes. What is Sorry. Uh, Pre-compiled -pre headers. It's, it's other stuff I will get to. So one of the things, if you want stuff to build faster, I, if you don't, I suggest that you get Clang and preferably a new one. Uh, I also, what other stuff I have, it's this one. You, you, can, you can look at the details on my, on my blog. blog. Uh, I'll just show the, the picture. This is, I did some tests. So the topmost one is just the, uh, I think that was the, it was either compiled from the distro or if I just built Clang just with the default options. 
and then I op op uh, optimize it specifically for my CPU, which is a question if it's worth for you because it actually takes time. But if you build with LTO, which is link time optimization, for example, OpenSUSE builds, the compa builds all the packages this way, you still sa save some time. And a PGO is profile guided optimization, which you first like run the library, run the program, in this case the <laughs> compiler, and it analyzes like where it spends the time. And then if you compile again, it uses the information to make it even faster. So this saves like 30% maybe. By the way, we, we could probably consider PGO even for building LibreOffice if it's this much how it helps, but that's just a note. And then the precompiled headers, the last two are precompiled headers, which I will get to. Uh, it's a question if, if it's worth for you to rebuild build your own compiler, but if you want any improvement, there are other ways. This is just one of, one of the things. Uh, About the, the, the chart you just showed. So what is the, the longest uh, time and what is the shortest time? Uh, so the longest time is, ju is basically just betting, getting the compiler just built in the naive way. Uh, but the numbers, what's the number? What's the number in seconds of the, the top? Uh, this this is just one source file random, randomly. Oh, it's just one file. Okay. Randomly, it's something big from Calc, and this one I think the uh, uh, this, the, uh, the longest one is 14 seconds. And the fastest one is less than four seconds. Uh, as far as I know, on Windows, actually, Microsoft Compiler is faster than even Clank, or maybe Clank is not as fast there, at least as I remember the last time I tried. Um, uh, a similar thing, you can also use some compile tools, but we by default pick uh, Ccache if it's available, which I suggest. I suggest get li getting at least version 3, because there were some improvements. It has switched it in internal compression to Z standard, so, and it has very little overhead. It's, the compression is enabled by default, so it takes way less well disk disp 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 space. Uh, Ccache is not a magic solution, it needs to be exactly the same rebuild, but for example, if you are using often git rebase or bisecting, then you will repeatedly have to rebuild the same task. It can save a lot of time. And in some cases, for example, I have, I have a desktop PC and I have work laptop, I use ice cream to distribute it. Back in the time when computers had like one or two CPU cores, I remember in KD times when there was a conference we set up an ice cream cluster and it was so much faster. It's not as use impact, impactful today, but it's still an option if you have more hardware playing around. And a little bit, as, as, uh, the linker that actually creates the binaries, the final step during building, also may have impact, uh, configure all, already, at least for the bug belts warns if you use the default GNU linker, which is horribly slow. So I suggest getting the LLVM, LLD, or the new linker called Mold, which it doesn't make a huge difference, but if you have like, if you just edit one file, it still can save a second or two or 10 if you, if you use the GNU linker. Uh, one, another way is actually building glass. For some reason, we try to, by default, try to build all our all the external libraries ourselves, which means we rebuild it all the time. Uh, I myself try to use the system libraries, which is a bit more complicated to set up because the con configure like configure run takes a long time, and when it's like halfway done, it tells you, "Oh, I cannot find the system library. Please install it and run everything from again." So whenever I do a distro up upgrade, which no, I mean, if I, I, I sometimes don't do this a bit, I just install the system st stuff anew and then I just need to spend like 10 minutes running configure, it, it tells me something, I install the missing dependency and need to re repeat repeatedly, but then the builds don't repeatedly spend time building the system libraries where we basically don't care normally. Uh, if you develop LibreOffice, you, you should normally do enable G GDB util, which will set up extra debug checks and so on. 
And as a side effect, it will also set up some useful stuff, which is generally not a good idea to do for release builds, like split debug. It will move some of the debug information into smaller files so that it's faster for the for the Linker to process it. This is bad for packaging because then you have then you have extra files. But if you do local builds, it's faster to do it. And if you do enable GDB util, it will <coughs> just try to do the smart thing out of the, the box for you. Yeah, unfortunately, if you use Clang, uh, we have quite a number of them, and the way I originally designed them back those. I don't know how many years back. They add, add quite, uh, quite an overhead. It's qu quite lame coming from me, but I actually no longer use them by default. I normally build without them, and uh, only when I submit it, I, I just, uh, this Git rebase will, will basically just apply again the last commit, so the files will be changed, and then I explicitly for the, force the plugins, so it's once compiled with the plugins. So it actually warns me before, before I submit to get it. Um, I don't know how to make the plugins faster without completely re reworking them, but it's what it is. Uh, how much do you pay for the compare target stuff when you have the set of time? Uh, I'm not sure why it's right now. I know at one time it was at least 15%. At, at some time, I, I revoked the plugins to try to share the uh, structure pass mm -hmm. because back then every single plugin walk the entire AST structure of the compile program. I remember to just try to walk it once and have every plugin have a look. I don't remember if it was before or after the 15%. Yeah, interesting to know the Uh, well, there was a time where, where, where the plugins were useful. I think by now I very rarely actually trigger a warning for, from the plugins. So basically, right now I just check before submitting because okay. the warnings are still useful, but I don't consider them useful enough to just uh, trigger them around them every single time. Uh, here is another thing which you may know, uh, the build system we use, because we have so many source files I and we use uh, GNU make, which is slow for this one. Uh, if you just run play make, I think if you have rebuilt everything, it's still like 10 seconds, 20 seconds at the very least, so you can limit how much gets rebuilt. You, if you type, for example, like make sc, it will just not only build only calc, but it will also only consider calc which will then make will have much less to build about. So, and you can specify for basically any, any target. For example, uh, the second bottom line, that's how to build just the SCU calc unit test. And it's much faster if you tell make to, to first change the directory to the calc module and then just build the, the specific target. The, the target is basically the name of the make, make file without the dot mk. Uh, there's a little, little complication. Uh, our build system tries to be a bit smart and automatically uh, do uh, silent build and parallel build, and I personally don't like it. Also because it doesn't work for uh, going into subdirectory, so I personally use it without parallelism and make a small wrapper script which does it explicitly, and then I just am used to using my own wrapper. Also, the last line, if you some, uh, sometimes you have dependencies between modules and then, you, then normally it feels like you have to use just make and rebuild everything. But if I'm, for example, modifying some library like VCL and then I'm testing it only in calc, then I need to change only VCL and everything calc needs, but I, that, there's no point rebuilding, for example, writer. So for that, I, I, I would write make sc dot all build, and it will just rebuild only calc and everything only calc depends on. So let's get to precompiled headers. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite topics because as you could as you as you could see on the 
previous picture. And actually, in one of the other blog posts, I even have a... You can watch it. It's, I have a video when uh, I built some uh, calc library without precompiled headers. Then the middle one is... That's kind of a setting which... Uh, I did some work, some which enabled optimizations in Clunk to compile actually faster if you have precompiled headers. So the middle one is uh, without these extra improvements. That's about how GCC with precompiled headers would compile. And the last one is, uh, I don't know. Anyway, so it's like the slowest one is like 12 minutes and the, does it have times at the end? Anyway, so I think it's like you go from 12 minutes to 8 minutes with the normal PCH to 4 minutes with the, the, faster, the faster one. You could, you could also see it like here. Like you, you can spend all the time improving, recompiling your compiler or, or you just turn on precompiled headers and then all the previous stuff basically doesn't matter. Then like it's just the difference between the last two, which is still a couple of percent, but it's a couple of percent for, from way smaller part. So uh, yeah, it's not uh, it's not in my, enabled by default. By actually here I'm mentioning I we already use enable PCH full, which is like the highest level. Uh, for or only on Windows for Microsoft Visual Compilers, so it probably makes sense to default it for a uh, new client. I already have been using PCH for years, basically without problems. Really, only the practical problem is that if you submit it to get it, which builds without precompiled headers, sometimes uh, th this basically work, works like you make one huge include file which includes everything. So then for people who don't use it, sometimes you forget to actually include the file you use and then the file breaks. So uh, here the second line from bottom, it's useful again to rebuild and use block PCH, which, which will temporarily disable PCH use just to check that it builds also without. But yeah, I, I think I will just bring up on the next ESC call that maybe we, we could default for it since it can make a huge difference. And uh, as I showed back then, rebuilding the huge calc library is three minutes. I still remember times when I was trying to avoid rebuilding calc like black because it was so many minutes. And now I just like change the main header and like, yeah, okay, three minutes, who cares? Uh, as I have know, in case you may have heard, C++20 got some new C++ modules. I have just done some tests and I haven't looked that much into it, but as far as I know, it's a huge step that's not backward compatible and it's long. It's a lot of work to change it, so yeah, if we want faster compass, we are probably stuck with precompile headers for quite a while. Yes? <coughs> these things really contradict? That is, you, um, is it not worthwhile? I mean, of course, it, it is It is a, a bunch of effort to, to switch from an include file and a base uh, approach to the writing, rewriting these things, or many of them as modules. But do you think it's not worth it, or not worth it right now, or is worth it, but it'll take a long time to happen? Uh, well, as I understand it, and I, I just have uh, tested it on small projects, so I may be missing something, but as I understand it, you basically need to re re rewrite the header files into mod modules format, yeah. and it, it's not compatible either way. Yes. So then we would be, be stuck requiring compiler which can handle modules, yes. and you wouldn't be able to build without it. Yeah. Uh, so we would need to spend time rewriting all of it. We, there would I don't know how the transition would be difficult when you would have just one or just two. You would need have co copies or whatever. And also additionally, building with the modules requires build system support because with, P, with PCH you can just run the build and do one pass. But these modules, as far as I know, you need actually a second pass before we just will find out the dependencies 
So it would also need rewriting GBuild or using a build system if there are already build system which support it. So it, it should eventually happen, but right now somebody needs to do it. I think it will be quite a lot of work and I'm not sure if right now it's worth the effort. Someone in the future, yes, right now. If, if somebody feels like it, yes, but I expect it's going to be quite some time. Yes? Can we use the preprocessor to have a single header that is both module and not module? Uh, possibly. <laughs> uh, but that would just help. It wouldn't fix all the problems. There is still the problem with the build system, which I don't know how much work it would be to change GBuild to have the second pass. Oh, it's less work if you maintain one head. And, and the problem is our oldest build chain, you know, which is, I don't know, Android something, whatever, if I can build a lot of PAM PC, something like that, you know, getting good compiler space. Yes. Yes, it requires uh, C++ yeah. module, our official, official feature of C++20. Clang also has a different implementation, which, uh, as I understand, it was actually backwards compatible. They're, they had some kind of way of importing header files into their modules. I'm quite disappointed that that was not the final thing that C++ decided for. For whatever reason, I don't know the internals. Uh, I'm personally dis disappointed with the way it's turned out, but it's what it is. Um, I, I don't know all the details, but this is the way I see it. Uh, yeah, this is just a mention that didn't really turn out to be good, but I tried it. Uh, LLVM, besides the Clank, comp uh, LLVM is the project which provides also the Clank compiler, so they also provide a C++ library. It's possible to switch, but and it's faster again to build, but it's kind of problematic, and I'm probably not even. If you want to know the actual details, we can talk about it later. But right now, just let's just skip the slide. Uh, also, this, this is a. It's titled build time, but building is actually not the only thing we do. We also, for example, use debuggers. So. Uh, as I said, you should, use, you should use enable GDB util because then you get extra useful stuff like GDB index, which uh, changes GDB from horribly, horribly slow to just horribly slow, which is still a huge improvement. Or you can use this, uh, you can uh, disable auto-loading of all libraries and then use the share library command to just selectively load it when it's useful. I'm, I sometimes use it because like, I just want to quickly attach GDB and I don't want to spend all the time waiting for it to parse the libraries. Uh, for the, those of you who, who use GDB and don't know that you can switch it to text interface, which makes it way, way faster, I suggest you Google GDB TUI, text user inter interface. It saves so much time. Uh, I, I have also tried to using the LLDB compiler, which is, again, uh, another project for LLVM. It's way faster. In some ways, it seems to be better. In some ways, it seems to be worse. But many of, it, like the workflow is slightly different. I still haven't actually switched, even though I have already submitted a bunch of patches to, uh, to LLDB. Kind of like the, the whole LLVM project personally repeatedly annoys me by being really pedantic in their reviews, and I repeatedly get <coughs> demotivated by just all the reviews. Well, anyway, but generally the tools are better, it's just sometimes it's effort to switch. And I think this is the last slide I have. Uh, another trick you may know, this is more about ease of use and disk, disk space. As you may have noticed, uh, git checkout of LibreOffice is very large, even just the .git directory. So you can do checkout just once somewhere, and then you can use the work tree feature, where you can just kind of check out a work tree into separate directories, and they all share 
the one dot git directory. So you can, for example, cherry pick between different ones. If if I, for example, want to update my my master, I just go to this main checkout. I run git pull there, and it doesn't ruin my work tree where I actually built. So uh, this is another trick, and yeah, this is all from me. So I don't, do we still have? We still have a few minutes, so in case somebody has a comment, question, or you want to share some of your tricks. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> they're all for um, kind of developer builds when we're interacting with it and we're building continuously. But um, when I'm doing the RPM builds for Red Hat, they're throwaway builds. I'm just building it once and I'm throwing it away. Uh, so in that case, we have that configure option for disabled dependency tracking. You can throw away all of your dependency tracking and not collect it in the first place. And it gives you a, a faster build. But it's no use as a developer if you want to rebuild a small portion afterwards. It won't rebuild what should be rebuilt. But for a one-time build for the distro packagers, you have that extra option. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so there is uh, minus minus disabled dependency tracking. And uh, as, I was, as I was saying before, make one of the part why it's very slow is because so many files create so many huge number of dependencies which make takes a long time to process. So if you, do, if you disab disable this dependency tracking, a make will just skip up the whole step. The problem, of course, is that, that you have to, don't have any dependencies, so it's not useful for normal development. But I, I remember I have occasionally used this even for my own things. I don't remember why, but for one time of builds, it's actually useful. So uh, one of my key use cases for GDB is I do something that crashes, and wouldn't it be nice to get a stack trace with real symbols in it? And uh, currently, it seems like you can attach with no shared library, and you can manually load each symbol library as you do it to avoid a five-minute wait, etc. But this seems pretty pathetic. Is there any way that GDB could just load the symbols for the shared libraries it knows are on the stack frame? Or do you, is there any way that you can do that more easily? Uh, if GDB could do well, when, when you crash, you have all of the frame pointers. You know where the shared libraries are that you need symbols from in GDB. And I just wondered if there's any lazy loading that loads symbols when it needs them to show you your stack trace. Uh, I have looked into this a bit, and the short answer is no. The symbol loading in GDB is so old code and so complicated uh, that it's very hard to improve it. I, I remember the GDB maintainer like a year ago or so blocked about improving. Uh, yeah, that's a, another case. If you get a newer GDB version, this has been improved a bit, even though I think with GDB index it doesn't matter. But basically, symbol loading in GDB is so horrible. And you always, I think you basically, what it does is that it loads everything for a shared li library. Uh, one of the reasons why LDB is so much faster is because it's newer, co newer code and it also is better at being actually lazy about it. And I, I think it also has better indexes. I think LLDB without indexes is faster at loading stuff than GDB with indexes. And other thing to backtrace is we have this uh, sal backtrace, whatever function. If you use enable GDB util, it will not trigger during a crash, which I think could be added, but uh, it, it normally uses the glibc backtrace call, which is next to useless. But in GDB mode, it tries to be smart. I implemented it like two or three years ago. It, if you actually now use the call, it will try to print a nice backtrace if you are in GDB util mode. And you, you do that with uh, address to line or something outside the process, or you use GDB, or how do you, how do, you do that? Uh, it uses the, uh, what is it called? other two line tool, uh, pre preferably again the LLVM one because it's faster and basically you get all the stake pointers in the call and then I added some caching group 
pink, whatever, and it resolves it, and that's how it prints the nice black trace. Okay, some more? Okay, so thank you.